Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. So I'm one of the founders of DeckMatch. Walid is here somewhere. He's lost his voice, but he was supposed to be with me. We are going to be showing you something slightly different today, not just a pitch for capital, but rather a demonstration of what we can do for most people's workflow here. You see, in trying to solve the similar company's problem, we stumbled across something pretty significant, quite profound, that promises to deliver a Google moment to private markets. But first, some context, how do we get there? So this is what we're known for. It's basically an API that ingests all of your top of funnel messy data, structures it, enriches it, and puts it where it's supposed to be, your CRM, wherever you do your work. In that middle stage, we actually have something pretty cool. We try and say, given what we know about this particular deal, who looks similar? And whilst our customers really loved everything that was going on, the outsourcing of the donkey work, they really thought that the similar companies feature left a lot to be desired. So we felt a bit crestfallen, right? And so we spent the last six months reverse engineering all of this problem. And I think it's best explained through this image. You see Slack, which I think we all know, has a few alternatives, right? You have Microsoft Teams, Discord, and to a lesser extent, Google Meet. Now you'll notice that I didn't say companies, I said product, and therein lies the distinction. You see, if I was trying to find a competitor to Slack, all I have at my disposal in terms of natural language is a one-size-fits-all company description. And it doesn't take Sherlock Holmes to figure out that I'm not going to find Microsoft Teams with Microsoft's warm and fuzzy corporate description. So there's a big gaping hole right here under products. And we thought, well, OK, let's try and license that data. It must exist somewhere, right? Uh, turns out it didn't. So we spent the last six months putting together the infrastructure, the data pipelines, the workflows, and the data flywheels to make sure that we can have the most up-to-date, interesting product-level data imaginable. So let me actually take you on a different journey now and show you the power of this data. Who remembers this tweet? Right, there was a controversy going on in YC in September where somebody forked somebody else, and you know it happens. And we thought, well, how often does this happen? We couldn't really tell that up until fairly recently with our data. So without further ado, here's YC, 5,000 companies. And typically speaking, that trajectory has been up and to the right with batch sizes increasing and so forth. But the best known uh, company is probably Stripe. And their company description is helpful, economic infrastructure of the internet. So the most similar company within YC for Stripe, according to the company level data, is, let's have a look, open source infrastructure for the financial internet, shipping infrastructure for the internet. Eh, it's basically garbage in, garbage out, right? You have insufficient descriptions, you're not going to go very far. But we see Stripe as a wrapper around a bunch of products. And each product has its own unique data. And that's unique to us. So now equipped with this, we can click on Stripe billing. And we should be able to see a much richer picture. So actually, Stripe billings lookalikes are Copilot. They are cash repayments. They all have some form of subscription-based billing application. Cool. So now if we zoom out, this is really what the competitive landscape of Stripe looks like. It's product-centric, right? And that's what we're trying to bring to the table. So if we were to apply it to all of YC, we get something really messy like this. 11,000 products. With dimensionality reduction, we can actually start to see clusters forming. Biotech, food delivery, insurance, recruitment tech, you name it. Simplifying the picture, we get something like this. Now you'll see that Pair AI and Continue are not the only ones building an open source IDE powered by AI, right? And the same is actually true for analytics. Amplitude, Postdoc, Mixpanel, they're all vying for the same customers as these other folks. And if we apply a temporal lens, we get to see some other cool things. 
like the rise and fall of bets and trends. All of this, again, not doable without product data. So if we zoom in on point of sales for small businesses, restaurants, etc., we noticed some cool trends. In 2023, for example, in the same cohort, same group partner, backed two companies that are, for lack of a better word, very, very similar, right? Uh, and the same is true again um, in expense management software. We have Bugetti and Alan, two companies doing largely the same thing for the same customers with the same group partner, same batch. Awkward. So I'll leave you now with the final lens, which is Gary Tan's investments, right? Probably the best known partner. In 2017, he backed Flock Safety, which is something that takes body cam footage for police and automates all the paperwork that goes with that. But this year, he backed Able Police, that does the same thing, only with AI. So what I wanted to show you here was not a dunk on YC. I, I think they're great. What I wanted to show you was that this is the level of insight that you can only get with product level data. So I'm really stoked to announce one product that comes in two flavors today. The first is for founders and operators in the audience. And with that, all you need is your humble email address. And we'll present to you what your company looks like and your product looks like. It's kind of holding up the mirror of truth, which is quite helpful. So we tell you where we source the data from, we show you your key features, but also, with a click, we show you who looks like you. And that's pretty neat, right? Because I can't tell you how many startups think they have a unique idea until they've been told by other VCs that I've seen this a million times. So we think that's helpful. You can take the data with you. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. And we're launching today, so go check that out. But the real creme de la creme is what we're able to do on the other side. So think you're a private market investor, you're an M&A professional, you're in corporate development. You're basically looking for things. And the status quo today is that we're stuck in directory world. So trying to find something with intent using a directory is like waiting until you hit something useful. So in this case, I'm going to type in you know, a company that I'm considering investing in. And I can see, ah, cool, here's the light firmographic data. And again, here's the product description. And I can have a look deeply at what that product really does. And I can then see, voila, here are the competitors. Very cool. But what if I actually don't know what I'm looking for? What if I have a thesis, right? I'm supposed to be an investor after all. So my thesis could be uh, something like, looking after the elderly, making sure they don't fall over and hurt themselves. So there must be some AI for that. So AI for the elderly to make sure they don't fall and fall detection. And so we perform a search. And within a couple seconds, we actually get very relevant results. So we're able to reverse engineer a company we should meet with based on the products they make. Again, not doable without product data. We can also leverage the fact that it's relational to explore the other products that they have, which is pretty cool. And so for us, the traditional data is actually useful. Um, and so we can do another search, right? So we'll do, uh, like, let's say we're a corporate. We're trying to clean up our supply chain. So we're looking for biodegradable plastics. We can find suppliers. Well, let's say I'm a search fund, right? And I have a particular thesis about a roll-up for the Salesforce ecosystem. So I'm looking for a barcode scanning app for Salesforce. Super niche, right? But lo and behold, we're able to pinpoint that with considerable accuracy. So all that to say, uh, you know, I think that the status quo has been, it's like trying to figure out the contents of a movie by just having the balance sheet of the studio. That is what private market data is today. And I think what we've all been missing is the underlying story, and I think that changes today with Alpha Lens. So I've been Leo. This is my LinkedIn profile. Please check out alphalens.com, and you've been great. Thank you. <laughs>